Welcome to this week's midweek meditation. Advent has arrived. The Christmas tree is up in church and we're starting to think about which special services we're going to attend. You may be opening an advent calendar each day and enjoying a small chocolate or you might have started reading your advent book. We all have different ways of preparing for Christmas and some of them have changed over the years. Do you remember stirring the Christmas pudding mixture and making a wish? I haven't really heard of that since I was a child. Another thing that I remember vividly is Mum's Christmas card list. She'd spread everything on the table, cards, pens, address book, etc, and set to work. It always took a long time because she'd start by including letters in some of the cards. As she became shorter of time, the letters became brief notes, but she always tried really hard to keep in touch with people at least once a year. So why did she bother? Why do we continue to send Christmas cards or e-cards or WhatsApp messages on Christmas Eve? I think it is because communication and being connected lies at the heart of Christmas. Just look at the Christmas story. When we think of angels, our first thought may be of little children dressed up in white sheets and tinsel. But the angels in the Christmas story weren't like that. They were messengers from God sent to communicate directly with people. We forget about how much of a shock it must have been for Mary to be told that she was going to have a child before she was married. It was probably an even bigger shock for Joseph when she told him. So he needed a reassuring angel to arrive and tell him that it was all going to be okay. Angels were there again to give the good news to the shepherds. God was connecting with his people. We are made in the image of God, so it is hardly surprising that we should want to send greetings to one another at Christmas and remind each other of God's love. It is also not surprising that that should spread wider and make us more caring towards others beyond our families and friends. It has become embedded into our culture so that even those who would not call themselves Christians think it is important to give to charities at Christmas and take care of the homeless and those who are lonely. For Christians, it is all part of loving your neighbour as you love yourself. Or the little acts of kindness that Lindsay mentioned in last week's meditation. But important as all this is, there is a deeper mystery of communication at work in the Christmas story. And this is explained in the final reading of a traditional carol service. In John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. I remember sitting in church as a child and thinking, what's this got to do with Christmas? I didn't understand then that it is referring to Jesus. Now that I am older, I understand more, but it is still something of a mystery. However, Jesus is called the Word so it has to have something to do with communication. Instead of sending messages through angels, God sent a person to be the message. This becomes clearer as the reading progresses. In verse 14, it then says, The word became a human being and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. And so the early believers had the great privilege of being able to listen to Jesus, ask him questions, and also do ordinary things like share meals with him. They learned the message of God's love through being with Jesus. Tucked away towards the end of the Bible is another reference to this, in the first letter of John. Here it says in chapter 1, verse 1, We write to you about the word of life, 
which has existed from the very beginning. We have heard it and we have seen it with our eyes. Yes, we have seen it and our hands have touched it. But then it continues in verse 3. What we have seen and heard, we announce to you also, so that you will join with us in the fellowship that we have with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And so it doesn't matter that we weren't alive when Jesus walked the earth. The message is also for us. We can learn about Jesus through the New Testament and share in the same fellowship with God that the early believers experienced. It also means that we can share this same message with other people so that they too can become connected with God. And so communication and being connected lies at the heart of Christmas. However, we can't just be passive observers. Communication isn't just about speaking. It is also about listening and responding. If my mum had sent out loads of Christmas cards each year but never heard from anyone, it would have been a pretty pointless exercise. The joy came when the cards plopped through our letterbox and she was able to catch up with the news from old friends. In the same way, the joy will come when we connect with God and with others. The circle of communication will be complete and we will truly have a wonderful Christmas. <laughs>